everybody. All right, Zane, we're really easy AI, and it's time to talk about ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas. Yes, a new feature that they've come out with uh, just about a week or so ago. Let's talk about it. So uh, here's what you're going to learn. We're going to talk about what is Canvas, uh, comparing it to Claude Artifacts, and then we'll get into the two things it does, working with text and working with code. Let's jump into what is Canvas, and real quick, Whenever I show you uh, slides like this that uh, come from the documentation, that's what we're looking at now. Uh, remember, you can, in the description, you can download my slides. All my slides are available. And in the notes for slides, I'll have the links to everything that I reference that is linkable, right? That is in documentation or something like that. So I do encourage you to go get my slides, take them, teach, you know, people at your school, at your work or wherever you want to. The only thing I ask is don't take my slides, start your own channel and compete with me. That's it. That's it. I want you to take this and teach it to other people. You learn more and so do they. So with that said, let's talk, look at the documentation on what is Canvas. And here it is. Uh, we're introducing Canvas, a new interface for working with ChatGPT on writing and coding projects. So that's what it works with, text and code. That's it. Um, that go beyond simple chat. Canvas opens in a separate window, allowing uh, you and ChatGPT to collaborate. That's, yes, very true. Uh, this It's in early beta, so the early beta introduces a new way of working together, not just through conversation, but creating and refining ideas side by side. Okay, great. Canvas was built with ChatGPT 4.0, so keep that in mind. Um, and can be manually selected in the model picker while in beta. Starting today, we're rolling out Canvas to ChatGPT Plus and Team. This was October 3rd. Today's October 11th, so everybody should have it at this point. Uh, Enterprise and EDU users will get it next week. And uh, I do have an enterprise account, and I believe we have it. Uh, I don't really look. Uh, we also plan to make Canvas available to all chat GPT free users when it's out of beta. Okay, yeah, I just verified it is out for enterprise users as well. So uh, everybody should have it at this point. Okay, so moving on. A um, little more description here. You control the project in Canvas. Notice how they use the word project. Uh, kind of interesting there. Uh, you can directly edit text or code. There's a menu of shortcuts that we're going to look at to adjust all kinds of stuff. You can also restore previous versions of your work by using the back button. So it's got a forward and back, kind of like an undo and redo. Uh, Canvas opens automatically when ChatGPT detects a scenario in which it could be helpful. Or you can do it yourself by putting use Canvas in any part of your prompt and it'll use Canvas. So you'll find we'll do a scenario like that uh, in a bit. All right, so let's do a demo, a quick demo of using Canvas, the simple example where it auto detects what's going on. We come into ChatGPT. Uh, by default, you're probably in ChatGPT 4.0. You're going to need to click on the drop down here. Choose GPT 4.0 with Canvas. You'll notice it is in beta. And then uh, here, I'm just going to put in a prompt that says, give me Python code that connects to the OpenAI API chat completion, submits a question, and gets an answer back. Pretty basic stuff. When I run it, watch what happens. Boom, it expands it into a window, and then it gives me all this stuff. So I've got this extra window here. Now, my resolution's crap, <coughs> but if you've got better resolution, of course, I'm having to do this for the videos. You got better resolution, you get a lot of cool stuff. We'll get into how to work with this uh, a little bit later on, but it's this easy. It, it will, a lot of the times, particularly with code, it'll auto detect and go, oh yeah, we should probably do this in Canvas. Uh, by the way, you can close the little canvas if you want as well, uh, if it irritates you. If it irritates you, don't use it. Don't say ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas. Uh, but it's a pretty cool feature. I like it. All right, moving on. Uh, comparing it to Claude Artifacts. Now, uh, you know, not to put too fine a point on it, but OpenAI stole this idea from Claude, right? Uh, and that's not a big deal because Claude has stolen a bunch of stuff from OpenAI. In fact, and for those who aren't aware... Uh, Claude was founded by two former OpenAI employees. So, of course, and I think they've got a beef with each other, too, or something. So it's, you know, there's some stuff going on there. There's some bad blood there. Um, but uh, so it's natural that they're going to steal from each other. It's all all the LLMs are very incestuous at this, at this point. One of them comes out with something. All the others get it pretty quick. And it's just all this, you know, all this um, stealing from each other. All right, so let's take a look then, comparing it to Claude Artifacts. 
Uh, here's the announcement for Claude Artifacts so you can do a comparison. Today we're introducing Artifacts on Claude AI, a new feature that expands how users interact with Claude. When a user asks Claude to generate content like code snippets or text or website designs, these artifacts appear in a dedicated window alongside their conversation. This creates a dynamic workspace where you can see, edit, and build upon the creation. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Uh, so let's do a quick demo. I'm literally going to take the exact same prompt that we had when we started this thing. Uh, right here, give me Python code, blah, blah, blah. Go into Claude, paste it, and run it. And it will automatically put it into a nice little artifact window here for us. So same idea, exact same concept, slightly different implementation, of course, but not so much that you'd notice. I mean, it's clearly a ripoff of this feature. And this feature has been out a lot longer. So it, there is zero doubt that, that Anthropic came up with it first and OpenAI stole it. Now, is that a big deal? No, I could give a shit. But I want you to understand where it originally came from and understand that other LLMs have this. So I think that's an important thing to call out. Okay, moving on. Uh, now would be a great time to remind you to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Most of my viewers aren't subscribed. Love to have you as a subscriber. And if you really, really like the content, consider becoming a member. We have two levels of membership. Artificial Narrow Intelligence Level 1, $1.99 a month. Helps support the channel. Um, Artificial General Intelligence Level 2, $4.99 a month. Uh, lots of stuff I don't do, but the one thing that most of my Level 2 people do uh, love it for is early access to new videos. Also... Both levels, regardless of which one you're a member of, get access to my enterprise track uh, that I update uh, periodically with all kinds of enterprise stuff. We're still going through the Google Enterprise lessons right now, and uh, we should be wrapping those up, I hope, uh, in a little bit and then moving on to other things. Maybe staying with Google, I haven't decided yet, or moving on to Azure or AWS. So anyway, if you want access to all that good stuff, uh, any level of membership will do it. In addition to that, if you like AI news, I have two AI news channels. One is where I read the news and is much more in-depth. You can find that at youtube.com at AI News Fresh. The other one is where I use Notebook LM from Google to take a bunch of articles, a curated, a very trimmed down list of articles, uh, and have it generate a podcast. If you've never heard those before, they're pretty freaking awesome. Uh, so awesome, I decided to make a whole new channel for it. So you can find that at youtube.com at Daily AI News Podcast. Also, that particular one is available on all our major RSS feeds, uh, so you may find it out there as well. All right, moving on. So now that we know Canvas exists, let's take a look at what it can do for us. And it's pretty spectacular, actually. It's, it's, I like it quite a bit. So there's essentially five things that it's gonna help you do when you're working with text. They are, in no particular order, suggest edits. ChatGPT offers inline suggestions and feedbacks. Uh, adjust the link, it'll edit the document link to be shorter or longer. Changing the reading level, that's right. Adjust the reading level, up or down as needed. Um, add final polish, check for grammar, clarity, and consistency. And if you want, add emojis. Add relevant emojis for emphasis and color. <coughs> All pretty cool stuff. Let's see it in action. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to uh, do a demo on doing working with text. Let me grab my prompt real quick. Here we go. And uh, let's see. We're out here. Let me start a new chat real quick. We're still with Canvas. So now I'm going to say um, use Canvas because I want to use Canvas for this text. It doesn't always pick up as easily with text. So a lot of times when you want to work with text, you'll probably preface it with use Canvas or put use Canvas somewhere in there. And so I'm going to say use Canvas and give me a quick summary of penguins. When I run that, it automatically popped the Canvas window. And you can see now, well, there it goes. And now I have the Canvas window up. And so on the left-hand side, I have my interaction. And on the right-hand side, I have the, um, you know, the, the canvas that I can work with. Now, there's a whole lot we can do here. Let's go through them one at a time. First, I can simply highlight anything, and automatically I get Ask, G, uh, ask uh, Chat GPT, and I can edit this, I can explain it, I can do whatever I want. So anything you want to put here, you can do. Uh, I might say, um, mm, put more about... Uh, 
about habitat. Something along those lines. It'll rewrite it, add a little more about habitat, and we're good to go. Now, in addition to that, if I choose, I can maybe pick another section like, like that. And then down here in the lower right hand corner, I have several interesting items here. Um, I have, for example, suggest edits, adjust length, reading level, final polish, and add emojis. Let's do suggest edits. And then boom. So uh, I'm going to point that out again because I, I did that kind of quick because I'm so used to doing it now. But you can see here it highlighted it. And then over on the left hand side, it suggested uh, I've added comments to suggest breaking up longer sentences, right? So there it is. Here's the comments right here, by the way, in case you're wondering. You click on it and there's some comments. Now it even has an apply. Consider breaking this sentence into two, two for better re readability. I can apply it and it will automatically take care of it for me. So now I've got one comment here. It might be helpful to briefly mention specific uh, benefits uh, in colonies. Yep, let's do that. I like it. And it'll update that. And then I've got one more comment here, the little bubble. And I'll say, yep, the phrase often taking turns can be more specific. Yep, that's fine. And boom, it updates it. So very, very cool. Suggest edits is pretty powerful. It gets better. Uh, I can highlight any particular section I want again, like this one. And I can come in and I can say, adjust the length. So here, this one's interesting because you literally click and drag the length. You can drag it down for shorter or up for longer. And of course, you can just keep the current length. We're going to make it a little bit longer. We can't, we're not going to make it longest, but we'll make it a little bit longer from current length, just a tiny bit. Now, here's the deal. When you're doing this, whatever it is you're doing, when you let go, it'll give you an arrow. So it gives you one more chance to not do it if you don't want to. Assuming you want to do it, you click on the arrow and it makes the adjustment. If you just click away, it won't make the adjustment. So that's part of the powerful part of it. All right, I'm going to highlight a little more. Come back in. We uh, did the reading level. Now we're going to do, um, uh, why don't we add some emojis real quick. So we'll add some emojis to some highlighted text. Click once and then click the arrow. And now it's going to add some cool emojis <laughs> to the emojis. It really suck. But anyway, all right. And then finally, uh, we'll probably want to highlight, we can highlight the whole thing maybe or highlight whatever part you want. We'll just highlight the whole thing and we'll say uh, add final polish and boom. And it'll adjust everything for us. And it's rewritten all the good stuff for us. And notice it took out the emojis because the emojis sucked. So there it is. Adds a nice little final polish. Added some... Uh, uh, some markdown to make it look better. Looks really, really, really nice. Okay, there you go. So that's all the pieces of working with text uh, that we have available to you. I think so. Oh, did we not do reading level? Let's do reading level. I think I may have forgotten it. Highlight any piece. <coughs> go to adjust reading level. Same deal. You click and drag. You can drag all the way down to kindergarten, to middle school. It comes up. Current reading level, high school, college. Graduate school, and graduate school is the highest. We'll keep graduate school and then click on the arrow and it'll rewrite it. So if you ever want to adjust the reading level, you can pick any part and boom, adjust the reading level. And I believe that's everything at that point. You can see here it's got, uh, we can add comments too if we want, uh, or we can edit or explain rather, uh, edit or explain and do some more here as well. Lots and lots and lots of wonderful stuff. Okay, so that is working with text. Moving on. Working with code. Yes, it works with code too. Similar idea, only the actions are different. When we're working with code, we get five things. We get review code. ChatGPT will provide inline suggestions to improve the code. Add logs, inserts print statements to help you debug and understand your code. Add comments, add comments to the code. Detect and rewrite problematic code to resolve errors. Uh, for fixed bugs, rather, and port to a different language. It'll actually take code in one language and port it to a different language. Let's see that in action. It's pretty cool. I, I actually dig on this one. So give me a second. Let me get my prompt. All right. Got it. Let's go ahead and go to ChatGPT. I'll start a new chat. And uh, the prompt in this case is going to be uh, the same thing we started with. Give me Python code that connects to the OpenAI API chat completion. Submits a question and gets an answer back. So we'll run that. 
it'll pop it in a window and we're ready to rock and roll. So we've got our canvas here and everything's good to go. Now, uh, again, uh, you can do a variety of things. One of the things you can do right away if, uh, if you want to is click add comments and click on run and it'll go through and add comments to the entire set of code. So most everything you're going to do, you can either do it with a piece or if, if you haven't selected anything, it'll do it with the entire set of code. And so, for example, I might say uh, add logs, for example. And we can go through, it'll add print statements for the logging as needed. You can see here it even says log, debug log. It's added a whole bunch of those statements in there. So it adds logs automatically. Very cool. Uh, fix bugs, if there are any bugs, typically with that, you'd highlight an area that you know you're having a problem with. Maybe I'm having a problem here. I might say fix bugs. In this case, it's not going to find anything. Uh, but it's, you know, it's going to look, actually, it's looking like the whole darn thing. It'll look through the whole darn thing. Sorry, my bad. Look through the whole darn thing, look for bugs. And uh, I reviewed the code and fixed a bug with accessing the response, replacing response.choices. So it did actually find a bug in this case. Okay, very cool. Uh, last but not least, you can do a code review, port to language. So it, this is in Python right now. If I want to change it to something else, I can. I can say port to language. Different languages I could <coughs> convert to, PHP, C++, Python, of course, JavaScript, TypeScript, and Java. Uh, let's go ahead and do JavaScript. So I'll choose JavaScript, hit the arrow, and it goes through and converts it to JavaScript for us with everything intact. Very, very, very nice. And there it goes. Still cranking. Very nice. So uh, that's pretty much it. You can, just like before, you can highlight any piece, ask ChatGPT, give it instructions, and so on and so forth. Uh, all of that's still there. But the real power comes in these main things here. Uh, and that is it, boys and girls. It is that simple and that easy to use Canvas. Uh, you can either tell it to use Canvas, or a lot of times, particularly with code, it'll automatically pop in Canvas. The only thing you have to remember to do is to select ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas, uh, the proper model. After that, <coughs> everything kicks in. All right. So that's it. Quick and easy. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. This is Zane. I'll see you next time.